everybody, and welcome again to The Seditionists. Uh, my name is Rob Furman. I'm here with my colleague and dear friend, uh, Keith Reeves. And I like your shirt, Keith. I see you. Thank you very much. Visti going on. I think this past weekend he was uh, getting ready for the Visti conference. He is the president, Presidente. Um, so, <laughs> Much to their chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. That's good times. It's a great conference. So if you, have, if you have a chance to get to the Visti conference, I believe it's in Virginia Beach this year. It is. Right? It's a wonderful technology conference. Definitely uh, highly recommended. Um, Keith and I, in our last episode, we talked about bullying and how Keith and I both sort of were uh, victims and survivors and uh, of, of the bullying life at times, uh, especially during those middle school and high school years. Um, but yet we, we also believed in uh, being able to persevere through those things. Uh, we want to take sort of a part two to that conversation, and this time we want to discuss uh, cyber bullying. Um, the, the, the concept of bullying and everything that goes around it I think are very much the same, but I think there's an added element to the cyber version of bullying that, that uh, can't be uh, misconstrued and, and we need to make sure that, that every person who's involved either as victim or as bully understands uh, the consequences that cyber bullying can, can, can deal with when it comes to the victim. Keith. You know, I think one of the most difficult topics um, that we face as educators, particularly in ed tech right now, is cyberbullying. And, and I, the, the source of that, I think, can be summarized in a word, which is anonymity. One of the troubles that we face when dealing with um, online predators, when dealing with uh, kids being kids, every, everything from the worst to the most innocent and everything in between, the fact that kids don't have the interpersonal experience of seeing the reaction on the face of the person that they're talking to, that they know that they are seen and identified, that they can see and identify their victim, that the victim can see them, it, it creates a power dynamic that I think that, particularly when we're speaking about children, they're just not developmentally prepared for. Um, and therefore, it seems to me that it's our keen responsibility as educators to teach the, the psychosocial skills of understanding that there's a person behind everything that's written, things like that, because you can't stop the cyberbullying itself, right? The, the act itself of interacting negatively online under anonymity because it's anonymous, you can't stop it. That's the mechanism, right? I can create a Gmail account completely anonymously. Nobody knows who I am. Bounce my IP address six ways to Sunday, and no one will be able to know who I am. I mean, you can learn fairly easily how to be completely unidentifiable online. Um, plenty of people have Twitter handles and Instagram accounts where it's not really, you can't really identify who they are. If we accept as a maxim that we don't have the power to stop people from doing that, period, which we don't really want to do. That would be like some kind of creepy Big Brother thing. I think the only thing left is to help people understand the incredible damage that you can do to a person through an anonymous attack. Absolutely. Could not agree more. Um, and, and I just wrote an article not too long ago for Huffington about cyberbullying specifically. And, and, and I, I think what kids don't realize is... When you bully somebody, like you said, it's a face-to-face -face interaction, and as soon as you walk away, uh, on a very superficial level, it's done. So, you know, if, if you never hear it again, if you never see it again, it was a one-time incident, it's done. But with, with, with cyberbullying, it's there forever. So not only are you getting bullied at eight years of age, but maybe you go on to Google at 12 years of age and you Google your name, which everybody likes to do, and you see that again. You're now bullied again. You go through it again. So you could con conceivably be a victim of that one single attack over and over and over again every time you would potentially run into whatever post or, or picture or Instagram or whatever. Those things don't go away. So so it's, it's, it's a far more aggressive attack in my opinion even though I don't think the kids see it that way right. but but I do because it's there forever it's it's the idea of it being there for eternity you can always look it up which makes it an attack that's really forever yeah that, that, I think that you're right about that it is one of the toughest parts of it because the bar is set in such a way that kids almost feel more and I use this term psychologically more permission they feel more enabled to say things they would not otherwise say you know if you're faced with a, a living thinking breathing person right in front of you and you can see the destruction that you're wreaking upon them in their eyes 
that's you, you, that that barrier, as it were, will, might prevent you from doing that. But when you don't have that, and all you see is a printed set of text, you have that additional sense of, well, I can get away with it. I can say what I want. Even as adults, I've seen so frequently people launch some of the most absurd and vitriolic attacks. Um, Rob's probably had to notice that I will often just leave Facebook and just throw my hands up and walk away from it for months at a time because I'm so frustrated by that kind of destructive stuff. But just as you said, in many outlets, particularly if it's like on Twitter or something where it's really public, those things persist. They're there. And you may not have the ability to get those things removed. And as, as you said, therefore, you're kind of having to relive that trauma on a regular basis. So I think that the ramification for us, for teachers then, is we've got to get people to be more interpersonal, to have better person-to-person -person human understandings, to help them recognize the harm that they can inflict on someone. And those skills have far-reaching positive pro-social effects, not only for stemming cyberbullying, but addressing things like sexting, um, being engaged in behaviors before you're ready for them, putting yourself in high-risk situations. It seems to me that we need to do a better job of actually teaching social and emotional learning in the context of schools rather than just talking about SEL. I see so many people talking about it, but how much are we actually taking the time to integrate it in a meaningful way into every part of our curriculum? Yeah, and I completely agree. And uh, I'll take that one step further for teachers and parents alike. Um, you have to model the behavior you want your kids to do. Uh, I can't tell you how many times parents is, have uh, burned me an effigy on Facebook and said some things that are inappropriate, about, even about each other. Like, I'll hear parents on parents. Um, and, you know, the kids are picking up on this. Don't, don't be so foolish, parents, to think yeah. that, you know, do as I say, not as I do. It doesn't work that way. Never has. If you're an adult bully, your kids are going to be a child bully. Sorry if you don't realize that, but that's that's the reality of it. Uh, yeah. Bullies breed bullies, and, and, and you know if you're not willing to, to look look at yourself and say may, maybe I'm being inappropriate, then you can't expect your child to be in, to be no different. Uh, I've had parents come in and shout at teachers at open house right in front of their kids, and you know when you're acting that way and and, and you're being the aggressor. Why do you yep. think your kid's not going to turn around and be the aggressor to another little kid, you know? Yeah, you got it. Bullies. Apple that's, tree. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the reality of it. So um, I think this was a good talk, and, and I, I want to – I'd like to end with uh, one comment from you and maybe one comment from me about, you know, if you are the victim or if you realize internally that you are the bully in a cyber world, what do you do? You know, one of the th I'll, I'll take the second part of that because I'm as a, as a fiery Sagittarius, I get really fired up, and I do have very strong beliefs about things. I mean, I keep writing books about it, so obviously I do. And we often express that we have that. When I go too far, when I model something badly, when I make the human mistake of being more married in a moment to my passion or to the topic than to the person I'm talking to, for me, one of the most important things that we can do as people, and this is integral to responsive classrooms, so I try to model this for my kids as well the unqualified apology. There's such a power in yeah. not, I'm sorry I did this, but I was. Yeah. I'm sorry, and then shut up and stop talking. There's a real power to a meaningful, unqualified apology. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that, period. All I right. think that's a very effective way of approaching things. Absolutely. With no justification. Just I'm Absolutely, sorry. yeah. Not the, the, the but ruins the apology so quickly. It does. Doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, if, if you are the victim, um, I would say especially uh, um, at that middle school, high school age, or you know, when, you're, when you're in that sensitive times, I'm not really sure how to say that, uh, you need to talk to an adult. Um, don't, Absolutely. Don't be so embarrassed where you won't seek help. Um, elementary is usually a little bit easier because the parents better be watching what's going on on those on those uh, devices right. uh, you know middle school where my boy is right now it seems to be a little bit easier for them to shuffle around and us not catch everything and in the high school I'm sure it's just you know all's fair whenever they're a little adult. it's an epidemic yeah but at the end of the day students those of you that are in that sense of area of being bullied go talk to an adult. I'm not saying 20 adults. I'm not even necessarily saying your parents. Find one person that you could talk to, that you could confide in, and, and, and then let them help you get through this because it can be absolutely jarring. It can be life-altering. Don't let it. Agreed. 
All right, so this is uh, Rob Farman and Keith Reeds for The Seditionist. Uh, hope you had a wonderful uh, conversation here. If anything you want to say, please add it to the comments. And also make sure you, yep, subscribe below. And um, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon.